What emoji do you use most? Well, like... <laughs> the last crying one? I probably use that one that's like... That's like that, you know? Wait, do it again? What one? Oh, like, like one when eye. When you're like winking yes. and they got this and big tongue. tongue out. I don't use emojis. What? I think the last time I used an emoji was about six or seven months ago. Mine is just also the... The last thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was the great. That was yeah. great. I like that you pulsed when you did that. <laughs> <laughs> and you made like the little dots for the, like, you're like. <laughs> My name's Caitlin. I'm the youth pastor at a church in Tulsa, Oklahoma called The Kirk. We've got an incredible youth group here. They are so fun. They love to laugh and uh, play games and be silly, um, but they love to um, learn deep truths about God and His work all over the world. We've got students like Sam, who's a senior, and he's an incredible volunteer. He's here pretty much every time the doors are open. And we've got Cassidy, who's a junior, and she has just this magnetic personality and a ridiculous laugh. And she's probably brought 25 friends to church in the past couple of years. And we've got Aiden, who's a freshman, and he has this incredibly deep and mature side about him. And then he's got this crazy, fun, energetic dancing side to him too. And then we've got Lily, who has just really gotten involved this past year, and she started leading worship for us. And it's just been incredible to see her and all of them grow deeper in their faith and step out in new ways. Our students have an opportunity to serve in a place in our church called The Gathering. The Gathering is a coffee shop that we created to sort of bridge the gap between generations. We make lattes and coffee and Italian sodas, and it's really just an opportunity for every person to come into the Kirk on a Sunday morning and feel known. It's a place for students to connect with other people in the church. As people come to get something to drink, they have an opportunity to donate. All the money we raise goes towards student missions. This year it's helping us get to Honduras with Engage. We chose to go to Honduras because we learned that part of the ministry there involves running coffee farms, and I'm hoping that it's gonna give my students a new perspective on what they do on Sunday mornings. And I'm also hoping it's gonna connect their heart to people experiencing God in other parts of the world. Here in Honduras, we're serving alongside one of Engage's mission partners called His Eyes. Their main campus is in Tegucigalpa, and it originally started as a medical clinic, but it's expanded to so much more than that. They have programs for underprivileged kids, and they're planting churches, and one of the newer parts of their ministry is coffee farms that they run up in the mountains. Felipe is part of the His Eyes team, and he's lived with his family in Honduras for almost 20 years. He's so funny and brings so much joy and laughter to the team and we're learning a ton from him. Well, what are some interesting things you've observed about Tegucigalpa? Well, one thing that usually surprises people is that because the, the whole country is so mountainous, this capital city is up in the mountains so that it doesn't, everybody thinks it's gonna be like insanely hot and it, like this is the hottest time of year and it, here in the city, it probably won't even hit 90 at any point. It stays pretty temperate all year round. The city looks a lot different than cities that we're used to because there's so many different Levels. things on top yeah. of each other. There's like a lot of things happening in one space. We don't really come from a very hilly area. Right. It's kind of just flat and you can probably see for a long, long time. And here just is like a bunch of different things 
really close to each other, which is really different. Yeah, it's way different. But it's kind of beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Like everywhere I look, I'm like, whoa, look at that. It's really pretty. Look behind you. <laughs> like everything's really, really pretty. I had no idea coffee came from a cherry. Like <laughs> we showed up yesterday and I was like, what is this? They were like, these are the coffee beans. And I was like, no, they're not. They're, 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 they're Take it and put it in your mouth. Is it good? Mm -hmm. So you just went full Call me blazer. Is that allowed? And there's your coffee bean. Is that allowed? Whoa! Whoa! Can on, I try it? It's not, it's not super clean, but it's not dirty. <laughs> yep. You, you get humid conditions so that they'll sprout. Yeah. Then you transplant them to bags, but by the thousands. Yeah. And you water them, you put some fertilizer and dirt in the bag, and then you let that grow for a year before it goes into the ground. Then when it's, it's been in the ground for three years, then it starts to produce. So it's a long process. We've always had the idea of that when we plant churches, we want them long-term to be independent of the mission financially. And that was, we were like, well, how can we help them do that? And how can we kind of actively do that? And so coffee was a, a way we, we saw at that point, it was a small way to do that on the property, maybe buy a little acre or something. And then we've had just some people come into our lives that have enabled us to buy, you know, this size of property. And, Just seeing how much goes into making coffee uh, is crazy, how much the people have to work here just to make one cup of coffee. Um, there's like five pounds of cherries that just go into making uh, uh, one cup. And all the coffee that we've seen today, uh, all the hard work that I know that they have to go through is just uh, very eye-opening. I thought it was really eye-opening when they said that they like most of the time lost profit when they sold their coffee and that they said that that's not what matters, that it was just building the kingdom of God and growing their church and how that was the most important thing to them. It really, it, it almost made me cry because I, I, they start with so little and to know that they don't care even to make anything more, they just want to spread the word. Whenever you go overseas or go down to Honduras, you know, you experience a whole different culture of the same faith that we all share. And you realize that there's so many believers and you have so many more brothers and sisters. And to know that like they're touching the coffee that we drink back home. So now knowing that like who is like making the coffee and how much work goes into it, like literally like warms the heart <laughs> because coffee's warm and a ton of people where your brother and sisters have touched it from far away. Dejar caer el martir, el martillo. I have no idea. Dejar caer el micrófono. Drop the mic. There you go. How do I say thanks for the warning that we'd be taking a 20 mile hike? Gracias por el aviso que iba a llevarnos en una caminata de 30 kilómetros, dice. I would hate that. Because of Jesus. Wow. Really? <laughs> I'm hopeful that I'm getting to learn uh, new things about God's kingdom. I'm learning a lot just by being here and being in other people's everyday life and seeing how God works in their everyday life because I've never gotten that perspective before. I mean, I've never even been out of the country. Um, so it's, I'm learning a lot about how God shows himself in tiny ways and in huge ways. It's all doing whatever you can that's within your like capabilities to further God's kingdom throughout the world. And whether that's being at home and just saying hello to somebody who may not have a friend and sitting with them at lunch or coming to a foreign country and helping some people build a wall for a church. It's all trying to further God's kingdom in the world. One thing that I learned is that God has been working and is continually working in everything that we did. And it's just really cool to see how even though something seems really bad or seems really different, God has a plan for that and is able to change that into his plan. It's been really hard for me because I just keep 
like it's kind of heartbreaking but also so amazing at the same time like I love how everyone interacts here and I don't think that needs to like fixing but at the same time it's really sad hearing that like kids don't get to go to school and like people can't find jobs and it's, that's heartbreaking and I just like I don't know it's been hard it's been difficult I saw my kids come out of their shells completely over the course of the week. I saw them interacting with locals in a different way from day one to the end of the trip. I saw them grow in courage and willingness to listen to the spirit. I saw them grow in willingness to be bold in the things that they said, in the ways that they interacted with the children. I saw my kids take the concept of church as our walls and building in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and translate it into what God intended the church to be throughout the world. I think a lot of times these trips seem like a one week, one off experience for you to go and learn something. But my perspective has changed in that now I see mission trips as a training ground. You're training for a life of kingdom work. And when you come back, you have an opportunity to put that into action. I watched you guys go from making coffee here in the gathering on Sunday morning to digging holes in Pastor Roni's coffee field and pray over this, this person who's un, unknown to us, um, who's going to, to come and plant something there. And the idea that both of those experiences are how God intended the church to be just blows my mind. The church is so much bigger than we could ever understand if we stayed in this building. My whole heart for missions and for student missions is that that is what you guys would come to see throughout the course of a trip like this. It's Sam knowing that Adam gets a sugar-free iced vanilla latte every other Sunday. And it's also Lily praying over this coffee plant and Pastor Roni's church. It's both and. Neither is less important, but God is in all of those experiences. Something that I still stands out to me and has honestly altered the way that I work in my life is that God is so undeniable and, and purposeful. And it's harder to see that in places like Tulsa, Oklahoma, but to see these people that he has undeniably placed in Honduras and undeniably chosen to be workers in his kingdom was just so opening of, of my faith and it's just so cool to see how undeniable it is that he is in every corner of this world. And I think that ties in like just how big his, his kingdom is. Just like, like Caitlin said, it's not just Tulsa, Oklahoma where you know God is working. He's working everywhere and this is uh, so purposeful, you know, he's there for every single one of us. He's there for us to further his kingdom and he's there for us to help others. On the day that we went and put on the clothing sale, we got to eat lunch there with just our team and Felipe actually got to tell us how he became a missionary in Honduras and he told us the story and basically he was like, my wife and I heard a call from the Lord and we dropped everything and moved to Honduras. He taught me that, you know, if you hear something from the Lord, no matter how scary it sounds, drop everything and do it, like, and you will be rewarded. Because now he's helped grow this huge ministry over in Honduras that reaches so many people, and the kingdom of God has grown tremendously because of it. I'd really just like to thank Felipe for putting up with us for a whole week <laughs> because there are times where it seemed like we were kind of starting to get on each other's nerves, but he the entire time was just so patient with us and was always willing to help us. <gasps> no. Yo. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Hi! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god. Pull the chair. chair. Pull the we got a celebrity in the house tonight. 
just thank you so much for really changing my perspective. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let me start over. <laughs> um, yeah, just thank you so much for, you know, changing my perspective about God's kingdom and showing me just amazing things. Um, like I was reading my journal the other day actually from the trip and a word I just kept using was, I'm just so amazed. And you were a huge part of showing me how amazing it is to be, you know, a child of God and work for God. And that's just so, it means a lot to me. What we would hope for, for you guys is that you would come back and be able to apply the same things you did in Honduras and do them right here where God has you or wherever God would take you, whether it's you know across your yard or uh, to your family members or to the local hospital or wherever that is because um, God's got things for us to do everywhere, uh, no matter where we are.